Welcome to the introduction to innovation strategy. We will explore the power of purpose-driven methods that reshape industries. Imagine a situation in which you are trying to achieve something. You possibly even have a reasonable solution inside. You might even not need that much effort to get there. However, you are faced with the comments along the lines of we do not do it like that here or never change a running system. You do not need to imagine the situation as you can probably remember such events. To some, the status quo is a comfortable place. Others wish to challenge it. In effect, they wish to innovate. Innovation is about changing the status quo, but can we define it properly? As it turns out, there is no common definition of innovation. Some dictionaries will claim it to be the process of introducing something new. Either way, when we consider innovation, the first thing that springs into people's minds is product. However, there are many other dimensions of innovation. For example, services, processes, business models, and other dimensions could also be innovated. The target is to get, engage the innovation process and change the status quo of some dimensions, resulting in innovation as an output. The goal is to reach something unique and possible to commercialize. Or, in other words, get paid at the end of the month by solving some problems for oneself or for the others. All innovations start with generation of ideas, but the road to the market varies. The majority of ideas fail, and most of the successful oneies take years to be commercialized. The idea generation stage is somewhat fuzzy. Some ideas are rejected pretty early, while others progress to the concept stage. At the concept stage, we consider aspects, such as the size of the potential market, the best way to perform the innovation, required finances, return on investment, and so on. The outcome of the conceptual stage is normally vague answers. The rejected concept could become recycled ideas. The last stage is the one where we get a chance to play with more tangible things. In principle, this is where you already would have a project that tries to bring its outcomes to the market. The key points to remember at this stage is that the funnel relates to all dimensions of innovation and there is an awful lot of recirculation going on. While there are different types of innovation strategies, there is no one that fixes all issues. It is up to you to decide which approach you wish to take. Also, the question is if you wish to work on your own or in a closed manner or cooperate with external partners. Each option has its benefits and drawbacks, and sometimes you have no choice but to select one of the two. In the case of closed innovation, you innovate internally with little or no exposure to the outside world. You could be forced to do so because of privacy issues or you are dealing with sensitive information, or it could be simply your choice to do so. In the case of open innovation, you interact with others and ideally complement each other's skills and markets. The benefit is that all sides get an opportunity to venture into the markets that could normally be outside of their reach. For example, it could be in a different country where you have no presence or in an industrial sector that is difficult to access. Exploring various innovation strategies is valuable to identify the ones that suit your needs. It is often asked, how do I make my team more creative? Many attempt to answer that question. In my view, the question is wrong. It should be, how do I create the right environment so that my team feel comfortable to innovate? Some of the actions that help kick off and nurture creativity could be empower others to make decisions or encourage the team to share their ideas regardless of their position or how silly the ideas might sound at first. Create teams with diverse backgrounds, skills and perspectives. The researchers in leadership skills will often tell you that such teams are more difficult to manage. It doesn't take a rocket scientist to figure that one out. However, if you want creativity, you also need different perspectives. Allow some time to mess about and explore. Make sure the failure is accepted, providing that we learn from it. Enable cross-chain cooperation, ideally involving different disciplines. Organize innovation challenges or hackathons. There are many other actions that you could do, but it all boils down to creating an environment where cooperation and exploration are the norm. Different frameworks or methodologies are used to guide teams through the innovation process. 
Some common ones are here. Design thinking. Design thinking prioritizes empathy, creative brainstorming, iterative prototyping, and user-centric solutions. It fosters understanding user needs, redefining problems, and iteratively refining ideas based on feedback. Lean Startup. Lean Startup methodology creates a minimal viable product, short MVP, to quickly validate assumptions and gather user feedback. Then you try again, or pivot. The idea is that the fast process helps you cut waste and deliver dynamic results. Blue Ocean Strategy. The Blue Ocean Strategy is about creating new market spaces by reinventing industry boundaries. It shifts focus from competition to innovation. Defining an innovation strategy is a time-consuming process, but it does not have to be as complex as it often is presented. You start by formulating your scope and you define the questions you wish to answer. Then you collect the and analyze available data in as objective way as possible. This is a time to keep your heart out of the game. You collect the outcomes and then you evaluate your options. In the end, you come up with a list of recommendations that form an innovation strategy. The key is to know what and to whom to communicate the strategy. However, no matter how much you share, every team must be informed about the direction they are expected to follow. Measuring the success of innovation should go beyond numbers. It should assess the impact in people's lives and the value created for them. You could have the best metrics in the world, but it would mean little if your team was to departure the following day. Success lies in how much the innovation improves the environment for the team, the lives of the customers, and how well it fits within the organization's purpose. Change is hard by definition. It creates resistance. However, challenges can be conquered by the persistent and patient pursuit of your purpose. The innovation strategy should start with the purpose, which is about challenging the status quo, considering possibilities and then implementing those. We can structure the process to be able to focus on innovation itself and be less distracted by the process itself. The rest is about trying, failing, learning and iterating. At the same time, we must think beyond the process. We must consider the teams we are part of and how to make the right kind of environment for them to be encouraged to try and even fail if needed. As innovation thrives in cultures that champion curiosity and collaboration, it is up to you to create such a culture for yourself and your team.